I have got something really exciting happening tomorrow, which I'll tell you about a bit later. Um, but basically I have to be up in Birmingham for three o'clock tomorrow. Um, and this is kind of like the run up to that event. It's Wednesday today. I tipped Sawyer this morning down at Oakhampton and then I had to give it a really, really good brush out because then I was loading clay. So we can carry first time quarried aggregates and stuff. As long as it's first time quarried and it's clean, we can carry it. I've just stopped in Strength from Services for half an hour break. Um, I had 15 minutes earlier, so I only need half an hour. Um, I'm going to get myself coffee and then I'm going to head up to Stoke-on-Trent where I'm tipping the clay. It's only about an hour and a half from here, so hopefully, as long as nothing major happens, I will get tipped tonight, which will set me in good stead for tomorrow. I got up to Stoke on Trent in plenty of time, which I was really happy about. The yard here is quite small, so I park up at the side of the road and then I walk down to find out whether I need to back in or drive in. It also gives them the chance to move anything that might be in my way. There were a few things that needed moving, so they said that they would give me a signal when they were ready for me to go in. They also told me that for this delivery I needed to drive in, which I don't know which is worse, driving in or backing in. When you back in, you have to drive all the way up the road, turn round and come back so you're reversing in on your good side. They have to stop the traffic and you have to get it right first time because there is a bay that juts out and it's quite narrow to get through. But even when you drive in, you have to get up on the curb to get through the gateway and then you have to turn round in there to get out. As you can see, it's not the widest gateway to get into and you have to use every inch of space so that you get the back end of the trailer in through the gateway as well. This is why it looks like I'm heading towards that bay of clay, but I'm just using all the space that I can to get the trailer in through the gateway and then I'll swing it round to get past the post. The ground is caked in clay, so I need to be very cautious that I don't slide on it. There is no room for error in here, so any misjudgment could cause me to slide into something and damage the truck. So we can now see the bay that I'm going to be tipping in. We need to turn to the left and then back into that bay. I need to take the corner as wide as I possibly can because it is quite tight. All the time I am watching the back of the trailer and trying to judge whether it go round or not. I also feel the truck losing traction which is quite worrying because this is the place where I'm going to be tipping and I don't want the load to be sliding me forwards when I don't want to move forwards. I'm going to pull up to the post and shunt it round just to give me those extra few inches on the near side of my trailer. I also need to be careful of the shoulder of my trailer on the post. Then it's just a case of snaking it through and straightening up as much as I can and pulling up as far forwards as I can to get myself as straight as possible so that I can reverse back into that bay. I never realised that I bit my lips so much until I started videoing myself. I looked like a right wally. I then put it into reverse and start heading back with the help from the banksman. 
At this point, I can only see this side of the trailer. I have lost the trailer in the other side of the mirror. And I have also lost the post that is on that side of the bay. I take it very steadily, as if I overcook it, there is no room to correct myself. I would end up having to pull forwards again and start and again, which I don't really want to do. I am nearly there and lined up perfectly with the bay, which just proves that slow and steady runs the race. I get out to check where I am and make sure that I am happy with where I am tipping. I also need to undo the back door. And if by magic, when I open my side locker, my gloves get out for me, which is very helpful of them. I am a bit concerned that as I tip up, my back door might hit the back of the bay, so I ask the banksman to make sure that I don't. I get back in, put my PTO in and then I'm ready to tip up. I take my sheet off and I put my onboard weigher on just so that it's easier for both of us to see how much has come out of the trailer. Not much has come out yet, but he gives me the signal to move forwards a little bit, as my back door is close to the back of the bay. Once I am clear, I can tip up a little bit more. You should now start seeing some of the clay tipping into the bay. Once clay has nowhere else to go, I pull forward steadily so that the clay has somewhere to go. This is the point where I feel most concerned about sliding forwards as there is so much weight pushing from the back. Once it's all out, I pull forwards a bit and let the body down, although I look at my weigher and I know it's not all completely out as it looks like there is still about a ton left in there. I get out feeling optimistic that my weigher might be wrong. But that was wishful thinking, there is definitely a ton of clay stuck in the trailer body. Which means only one thing, I have to dig it out. I set about getting my spade off of my trailer. And I kind of bodyboard on the catwalk to try and get it because I'm too short. But where there's a will, there's always a way and I get it. It doesn't actually look that much, but clay weighs quite heavy and it's quite hard to dig out as well as it all sticks together. I also kind of regret filming this in time lapse as it makes it look a lot quicker and easier than it was. It was actually really hard and at one point I even had to put my hair up because I was getting so hot. I guess the only good thing is that it was a really cold day so it was easier to cool down afterwards. This 15 second clip took in real time about 20 minutes. 20 very long minutes. I then put the body all the way up again just to get the last little dregs out and give it a final sweep out just to make sure it's completely clean because I'm picking up soya in the morning. I then tried to do a sassy taking my hair down walk but I just look like a sweaty mess. I really don't know how they do it in the movies and make themselves look so beautiful. I move forward so that they can push up the clay that I have tipped and make room for me to turn round to get back out. Oh, it's a bit of a squeeze. Once that's done, it's time to get back in and manoeuvre. 
I need to back round to a bay that is on my offside. The thing I'm most worried about when doing this manoeuvre is all the things down my near side. I need to take the trailer round in a smooth arc and not be tempted to go too strong and then correcting it by swinging my unit round into the objects on my near side. As you can tell, they've made it super easy for me by putting that machine right in the bay that I am backing my trailer into, giving me just that few less foot of space to use. Woohoo! And we've made it round! Which now means I've done my job and I can get out of here. What a relief! Even after watching this back, I can't tell what the bloke heckles at me here. Probably something rude as it normally is. And then it's... Follow signs for M6. Thank God I didn't have to tip in the morning. Thank God I made it up to Stoke Trent on time to tip tonight because if I tipped it in the morning and it was a really cold night and the clay all froze together, I would have had even more issues getting out of the trailer. Um, clay don't really like the cold. I think it's more like pliable in warm weather. So this sort of weather, I mean, it's two degrees now and it's Ten to four in the afternoon. I don't want to be rushing. I want to be relaxed tomorrow night. So this exciting thing that is happening is basically I have been invited to the Road Transport Ball in Birmingham on the eighth of December, um, which is tomorrow. Um, because, and this is going to sound a little weird, um, I have been nominated for driver of the year. So this is a nomination. There's three people who've been shortlisted into the nominations, um, which like I'm honored to be nominated. I'm not expecting to win in any shape or form because I do know there's another chap that's been nominated and I know he does an incredible lot for charity and he's brilliant. So I've never met him, but I know what he does. So in a way, I hope he actually wins. shower in Lim and it was so cold well the water was really warm but it's so cold taking your clothes off in this weather oh I swear it gets harder and harder every year then it's back out into rush hour traffic to use up all of my time left for today I've parked up I've done everything I need to get ready for tomorrow so it's time to get a good night's sleep why does that always go so quick right up, ready, go, get the load. 
and time to pen again. because I think Philip Judge might be parking up in the same uh, truck stop as us and I don't want to embarrass myself in front of him the dirty truck never mind for those of you who don't know what the calibre of Philip Judge's lorries are really thankful for that and if that's all I get I'm just I'm really happy for the nomination to be honest. I think I know who I would like to win out of the three finalists because I think he's absolutely amazing. I know I'm quite new to YouTube and you're probably watching other people's lorry videos on YouTube and you've never heard of me but I've had quite a healthy following on Instagram for quite a few years um, and I've tried a bit of TikTok as well and I've done all right on there I don't post that much on there because I find it quite um, it should be a good app it should be a good app but there's a lot of trolling and I do worry about young minds you know if you have been watching other people's videos and you've never heard of me you're probably thinking well, why is she getting this award and in the words of like Nikki Graham who is she who is she where did you find her that's her I know there's loads of loads and loads of other truckers, thousands of other truckers that do exactly what I do. So I'm not <laughs> I'm not one of those people that's oh my god, I've won, I'm the best. I love the industry and I I I'm very passionate about making people realise how important it is and how how good the industry is, how fast it is, how how much people rely on trucks. Because without trucks, we'd basically be stuffed in the modern way that we live our lives. And just when I thought I was doing really well and I was going to be early, this happens. I stop very quickly on the motorway and nothing moves for ages as there is an accident only 100 yards ahead of me. They start turning all the cars around but not the lorries. So I'm just going to have to sit here and wait. I've just arrived at Lincoln Park truck stop. 
and I'm just waiting for my plus one. But who will it be? Um, I'm just waiting for them to get here and then we get lift over to the VOX in Birmingham. And the hotel that we're staying in is really nearby. I'm not really sure where. I don't really know Birmingham that well. Um, so once we get there, we can start getting ready and go to the ball. Tomorrow I have, well, basically I can start when I want. Um, I'm all loaded, ready for down south. It's a Saturday tip, so depending on how I feel and stuff, I can just take it back the yard um, or I can pick up another trailer if I feel all right and go and get something else. But um, I'm not planning on drinking very much, to be honest. It's a very posh corporate event. I have a habit when I get drunk to think that it's a good idea to do four rolls on the dance floor and then fall asleep in the corner. So I really don't want to do that and embarrass myself. And here she is, she is here. The one and only owner driver, extraordinaire, Lucy Leafham, backing in next to me like a pro. We get our stuff together and Sean Taylor comes to pick us up and take us over to the hotel. We book in and take our stuff up to the room. And even though it's four o'clock and we are having a free course meal later, we decide that it's appropriate to go and have a cheeky Nando's. We go back to the room and get ready into our best clobber and then make our way to the ball. When we get there, we even have our photo taken in front of one of these big posh advertising boards that you see on the red carpet on the television. Then we make our way to our table and I'm just amazed at how many people are at this event. It just feels totally surreal that I'm actually here. Including from the end, doing auctions, including from his camera and trucks, but he also took important life saving supplies out to the Ukraine three times. Yeah. 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 I know her. How are you? Well done, you. Yeah. Yeah. I do get a little bit excited when Footloose comes on, so that's the sign to me that I probably should make my way back to the hotel room. And the two Cinderella's are back by midnight with both of their shoes. It's been a fantastic night, but we both need a good night's sleep before driving tomorrow. It always amazes me the amount of products you use to make your face look nice. And then it, all it takes is one single wipe to get it all off again. Because Lucy is used to sleeping in a truck bed instead of a real bed, she can't quite get her head round how the sheets are so complicated in a real bed. All that's left now is to switch the lights out and have a good night's sleep. Then we're back at the truck stop for about 10 o'clock for a decent breakfast. Friday, Friday time, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Then it is sadly time to say goodbye and head our separate ways. Lucy has a breathalyzer to start her truck, so at least we both know that we are safe to drive. Well, that is it. That's the road transport dinner done, and I had a really, really good time. So I didn't need to worry about Philip Judge seeing my dirty truck because he didn't stay at the truck stop with us, so that was good. Oh, chilly today. It's lovely and fresh though, I think I need this like freshness. So I found out that actually there were 175 people nominated to start with um, and it got whittled down to three. So it was me, Philip Judge and Karen Sutherland from Girl Talk. I think it's just amazing that I even made it down to the last three. Like I can't even believe that I got to the last three. So, like, I didn't even know these awards existed. So, 
so yeah everything I do literally I do I'd do it if there was no social media if no one was watching me I'd still be doing it I'd still be doing all my carnival rubbish and everything like that I did meet some really cool people and someone said something really nice to me as well a few people said really nice things about just keep doing what I'm doing because I often feel like sometimes maybe I'm I don't know people aren't really into what I do It was a great night though. It was a great night. I absolutely loved it. I really did. I want to do it again. time basically so I had an early finish yesterday I had a late start this morning so I need to pull my weight basically which is fine it's fine I was kind of expecting it I think I was just hoping that he would take pity on me I would love to say a massive thank you to Track and Driver magazine for the amazing hospitality that we had last night it was absolutely phenomenal I've never experienced anything like it so, yeah, a bit different than um, sleeping in the truck and going to find a service station shower. It's unreal. Best shower I've had out on the road, definitely. I think I'm going to leave the video here for today. I'm going to leave it on a bit of a high of still buzzing, still can't wrap my head around the fact that I was even nominated and leave it there. So, Thank you very much for watching and 
um, subscribing if you subscribed or if, if you want to see more of this please go ahead and click that subscribe button that'd be great thank you hopefully see you next time